the desert. Sand as far as the eye can see. The burning sand and an indescribable dryness. Not a place many people go to, at least to stay for a long time. In Jordan, where 75% of the country is covered by desert, the Bedouins chose to do exactly that. Thousands of years ago, they made the desert their home. This is the story about people who didn't only survive in the dry, at some point in history, they thrive. Bedouin tribes or clans have lived in the North African and Middle Eastern desert for a long time. Historians estimate that the Bedouins go back until 6000 before the Christian era. Ever since, the Bedouins have made the desert their home. But back then, they didn't stay in one spot for long. The dry landscape made it quite difficult for them to find water or harvest any crops. So in constant search for water and fertile soil, the Bedouins were forced to move from one place to another. Together with their camels and sheep, they travelled through the desert. Safe to say, they were nomads. They set up their camels wherever it made sense for them. During these times, the tribes mainly generated profit by taxing caravans or accompanying foreigners and their goods through the desert. Since the desert has always been their home, no one else knew these areas as well as the Bedouins. In the early 1300s, it was documented that some tribes had created proper customs posts around the desert so people were forced to pay up before going any further. They basically guarded all the entering trails and hunted people down who tried to cross the desert without paying a fee. One specific group who controlled many of the trade routes at some point were the Nabataeans. It is not exactly known for how long, but at some point they even had their own kingdom, 
in the area where today Jordan, Egypt and Saudi Arabia meet. Around the 4th century BC, the city of Petra became the kingdom's capital city. The city of Petra, nowadays one of the seven wonders of the world. astonishing building carved into a rock. Petra is a whole city inhabiting up to 30,000 people at some point. The main and most well-known attractions in the city are the treasury and the monastery. Buildings that were carved into the soft sandstone which escapes the area. The main way of getting there is by walking 1.2 kilometers through the so-called Sea. A narrow path between high risen mountains of sandstone. The reddish and soft colors actually gave Petra the nickname of Rose City. At the end of the sick, you find the huge treasury, which was rumored to have enormous riches stashed during the occupancy by the Nabataeans. A little further, in the city center, a tremendous amphitheater dominates the view. All around the great temple, will find innumerable tombs that were carved into the rock. Once built and inhabited by the Bedouins, Petra is still the home to some. While most Bedouins have adapted to the modern world to some level, others still live in caves. and his donkey, whom he calls Farah, or Awad, who cooks tea for the tourists in Petra. Them and their families are one of the around 50 families who still call the ancient city of Petra their home. Their daily routine consists of farming or guiding tourists around the area. Nowadays, tourists have become the main source of income. Many Bedouins have set up camps in the middle of the desert to host people from around the world. Tourists can experience a proper Bedouin lifestyle here. The cotton huts you sleep in are very traditional, but be careful, a night in the desert can get extremely cold. Bedouin tradition is all about the tribe and family. So to make it possible for tourists to kind of experience this togetherness, in every camp they host the dinner in a big common tent. Everybody gets together to drink chai tea, have some soup and share their stories with strangers. The hosts serve traditional meals even prepare them like their ancestors. The 
this whole experience is not comparable to your normal hotel vacation. The kindness and hospitality of Bedouin people is simply one of a kind. They say if someone comes to their camp and asks for shelter, they will provide travelers with food and a place to sleep without anything in return. So, in a surrounding like this, it is safe to say that strangers can quickly become friends after long nights of chatting, laughing and eating. And when the sun rises again, the Bedouins will invite you to show you around the place they call home. While their ancestors relied on camels to get around, today most have switched to modern jeeps. An easier way of transporting tourists around the huge fields of sand. But don't be fooled, camels have not lost their value and standing to their folks even a little. So the Bedouins have been existing for thousands of years. Well, these nomadic tribes were simple people who were herding sheep and have been in constant search for places to stay. They took great part in the formation of today's countries around the African and Middle Eastern desert. 